Hello and welcome back to my shop. Um, I want to try out a technique on my lathe called inside out turning. With inside out turning, you start by taking four pieces of stock and taping them together with some strong tape. Now I don't have a chuck, so I need to use my spur center and a live center to do my inside out turning. That is normally not a problem. You take a wooden mallet and drive your spur center into the end of your stock and just start turning. With four pieces of material taped together, if you try to drive a spur center into the end of that material, it's just gonna separate, the tape is not gonna hold. So I needed a way to cut a groove in the end of my stock so that my spur center can grip. And what I came up with is a very simple jig. It's pretty much a miter jig in reverse. Instead of having a V at the front of your jig, that you lay your stock against to cut a nice 45 degree angle and to be able to put that together to form a 90. This particular jig uses a reverse V. The V is more of a pocket that you put your stock into and it holds your stock in place and the kerf forms the nice um, X mark on the bottom of my piece, as long as the piece is square, to grip it in the spur center. So I would like to invite you to join me for the next couple of minutes while I build what I'm gonna call a lathe spur centering jig. Big fancy name for a real simple jig. I think you're gonna like it. To cut down on the amount of time it took to make the video, I had gone ahead and milled out a couple pieces of red oak uh, to use as sliders in my T-slots, uh, and I've already glued them to the bottom of my sled. Once the glue from the runners was dry, I went ahead and cut a partial kerf uh, in my sled. From this kerf, I was able to measure to the right and to the left and find a common distance that put this kerf exactly in the center of the sled. Once I found that common distance from the, the kerf to the side, I measured from the kerf back that distance and created my 90 degree V or pocket. Once I got my 90 degree pocket in place, I then brought up my hardwood, my red oak, and laid it against the 90 degree. I used a rafter square to verify everything was nice, tight, and perfect 90, and I scribed a line along the back edge, giving me a nice little area to know where I could have fixed my screws. I've gone ahead and pre-drilled my holes in both sides, and I've countersunk them from the bottom. I'm gonna use some one and five eighths inch deck screws from the bottom to attach these red oak rails to the sled. I've temporarily attached one of my side braces with a couple of clamps, making absolutely sure that I am as tight to this line as I can possibly get. From the pilot holes that I had drilled on this side of the sled, I was able to get to two of them, the third one, the clamp is in the way, and I was able to drill starter hole into this piece of oak. I'm gonna flip this board over, attach this board with the two screws from the bottom, then I'll remove my clamps and be able to attach the third screw at the bottom of the uh, piece of oak. That worked out well. I am dead on my line. Now to flip it over and drill and install the final, final screw. Now that I have my oak guide installed and securely attached to my sled, I need to go ahead and start my saw and run the blade just past the, the, the guide. The idea is I want to have a 45 that my curve of my blade can pass through at the back of my sled. So we're going to do that before we attach the other uh, guide. To prepare the guide for the other side, I also want to get a 45 cut along the bottom of my piece of wood. And the way I can do that is by flipping it over and attaching it here. I can clamp it down. Now I can cut and put a perfect 45 on this guide. That will enable me to flip it over and get it attached to this side of the sled.
I've clamped down my guide on the right hand side of my sled and I've lined it up just like the other one as tight to the line I drew as possible and by installing my rafter square here you can see that there's no play. I've got a nice perfect 90 degree angle so I want to get this flipped over and get some pilot holes drilled in my oak guide and then we'll get it attached. I've got both of my oak guides mounted to my sled. Uh, what I want to do now is I'm going to double check for the 90 degree angle to make sure it's perfect. Uh, and then I'm going to run the sled through the blade once more just to clean this kerf out. Checking with my rafter square, I have a perfect fit and a perfect 90 degree angle. Now I want to clean up my kerf between my two guides. The last thing I need to do before I put this sled into production is I need to reinforce the back of the sled. The reason for the reinforcement is unlike a miter sled where the V goes the opposite way and you only have to cut a small section into your sled, you'll notice I had to cut a pretty large kerf and that's going to weaken this sled substantially. Here is my plan for shoring up this jig and keeping it from being flimsy. I visited my scrap pile and I came up with a nice piece of three quarter inch pine. My plan is to mount this piece of pine to the back of the sled by uh, countersinking screws from the bottom up into the pine. The second thing I want to do is on the front half of the sled, I've got a nice piece of cedar here and I'm going to mount this with a screw on the end of each of these oak guides. Since I only need to cut a groove that is about an eighth of an inch deep uh, so that my spur center can grip the uh, piece of stock easily. This allows me a s almost seven and three quarter inch depth of piece. If I need to groove a piece that is larger than seven and three quarters of an inch, I can simply remove the two screws, lay this aside, make my cut, and then reattach this to the sled when I'm done for rigidity. I've gone ahead and attached my brace across the front of my jig as well as my brace across the back and it's done a great deal to stiffen this sled up. One of the reasons I built this jig was because I want to attempt to do some inside out turning on my lathe. With inside out turning you tape together four pieces of stock and you turn them and then you remove the tape, flip them 180 degrees, put them back together and finish turning them uh, into the final product. In order to do this I need to be able to grab this wood with the spur center of my lathe. With a standard spur center on a lathe you've got these little nibs that sort of grip the wood so what I'm going to do is cut two roughly eighth inch deep slots in this wood and that will allow me to center this spur and grip this wood and be able to turn it on my lathe. And that's where this jig was born. My plan is to drop this piece of wood into the groove that I've built. And then I'll run the sled forward over the blade, cutting a perfect, roughly eighth inch deep slot diagonally across the wood. I'll then rotate it, cut a second slot, and I should be able to grip this wood with my spur center without forcing it apart. I've raised my blade to right about an eighth of an inch. You can see that this support will definitely not be in the way of the blade. I've used a couple of clamps and clamped tightly this piece of wood into the corner of my sled, making absolutely sure that neither of these will come in contact with the blade. Now let's go ahead and make our first cut. perfectly centered. Now let's rotate it and cut one the opposite direction. Once again I've clamped my block into the into the V 
and I've made absolutely sure that nothing is in the path of the blade other than the block of wood. And we have a perfect cross right down the center, and that'll be a great grab for our spur. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making this jig and putting the video together for you. If you like what you've seen, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. Also, please like the video and let me know with a comment what you think about it. And if you really like the video, please share it with your friends. All of those things do an awful lot to encourage me to continue making free woodworking videos for you. I want to say thank you once again for watching and have a wonderful day.